schon noch da, aber man kann auch Brief von Leo, ein Brief von Vorbild, das ist noch in der Sendung noch, das wäre das Tüdel oder so. Aber das ist nicht, wenn du das machst bei mir, dann habe ich das Probert, und ich weiß nicht, dass die Leute in Leo haben gestartet, zu improven, alles, was ich sehe. Wenn du das machst, dann sehe ich, dass das vielleicht Flower war Holz, a sort of a pink flower. And ended up being white flower. And at the base, was once here, and moved down to here. So I'm shifting things around all the time because I'm really not just looking for that specific moment in time. I'm looking for different moments that build up and are layered and contain the different aspects. And while this is some fairly simple motif of the white flower. It's been worked and reworked. Um, I started this painting maybe in April or May or something like that. I only finished it um, in October. Um, 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 a lot of the marks then are the result of, of the layers are underneath and scraping things back and putting things back. So you can sort of relate in space and in time to, um, to how the paint was built up. And all of the paintings are really to like that in a way. You know, they have the concern with time and with space. Um, and obviously with um, the suggestions that images can give us. Uh, and also with the language of paint. Um, so it's not about any one specific thing. And then if you put that together and you put it into a painting, and in a way all paintings I think are like, not just my paintings, but all paintings are a sort of a, a sum of, of different moments. And if you look at them, there's a, a, a marvelous painting um, that in the interview in the Irish Arts Review I talk about, I think. I also talk about it in that there's a sort of a, a little text I wrote and uh, um, just get printed it off, you can, uh, it's been, you can take a picture. Um, and I refer to that painting in that little text. Um, it's also in the book, it's in that artist's book. Um, uh, I had finished up in the SAD making egg tempera and um, watercolour portraits of the dice map. And I got in the, the year of postgraduate here from Campbell. Um, and in the summer I went to London as I had done prior to that. And went into the Rembrandt room as I had done prior to that as well. But this day suddenly this Rembrandt registered like it never registered before. Um, like everything in life, I think you see what you can see at that moment. When I walked into the Rembrandt room, I was obviously, I saw what I was looking for. You know, I must have been ready to see it then. Um, and I sat all day in that Rembrandt room looking at Marguerite the year. It's an old portrait that Rembrandt made of, of a woman. I think she would have been in her late 70s, at least in the 80s at that time. Um, and it's so incredible. The layers of paint. Her hands are huge, um, her face is just there at the time. Um, and, uh, it's the only painting I ever cried in front of. And I think I was crying um, in preparation because I realized what I wanted to do and also what I couldn't do. But that I very much wanted to do. So I remember going back to the NCD and I spent that whole year painting portraits based on the Rembrandt. You know, I, had to, I stretched the canvases that were the same size as that Rembrandt painting. And that's all I did that whole year. Uh, I, I realized that paint had, had the power that I just couldn't exercise, I just couldn't do what I very much wanted to do. So, um, that, if anything in life, that paint has had a huge, huge impact because you see the power of paint, the texture of paint, you see time in that painting, uh, it's so incredibly powerful and there. Um, and that was then in the 17th century, so paint has always been capable of doing that. Um, um, and there's another painting, and I also talked about that in the text, 
is from Dilly Clouds. It's a, a glue painting. And glue paintings are very rare now because they're very fragile. And that's one of the last remaining glue paintings, also in the National Gallery in London. And the paint has been sort of damaged here and there, so you see the texture of the canvas. And you see um, the fragility of that painting. And you see time. You very much see how time has has affected that painting, but how the painting also carries, like in a capsule, carries time. I, I once uh, was lucky to be able to be in a congress about conservation restoration, and uh, um, Roger Marianison, Jim Marianison, was the chief restorer for paintings from the Belgian state. He was given a conference. And he had this theory that art in general only reaches its climax after about 400 years. So the whole thesis was never try to bring a painting or a sculpture or a pot or draw on anything back to where you think it was when it left the studio. Because in fact it's a natural sort of phenomenon that that artwork will change. It, uh, and it will be damaged maybe, but it will it will get layers because of it and it will continue to grow mm -hmm. until it starts to fall apart. So he was more for conserving paintings, but not trying to repaint them to make them look like. And they were doing that in the nineteenth century, they would repaint paintings almost to make them look like they thought they were and they were first created. But then you lose the whole power of the artwork. The artwork it's also very much in that time, it carries it with you, and the Dilly Clouds is like that, and that Remnant is like that. And so much like that that I, you know, I don't feel the need to see the Dilly Clouds, you know, uh, 400 years ago, because the Dilly Clouds I can see now carries all of those moments in it. If you look long enough at it, you can also almost go back in time. Uh, it, it's a fascinating painting, um, and it's made of this nice. The entombment, and that's also a national gallery. So that's it. Does anybody?